Hi everybody, welcome to my 17th beam video. In this video, we do more of a little bit of a practical example, more of a fun example. So, find the spacing S that the two rows of nails should be so that our hero is safe by a factor of 2.5. Alright, so a hero, it's hard to say, he's just a regular construction worker trying to be safe. But, hey, construction workers are heroes. They build our society. So he's standing on here. You know, he's got his hammer, his pipe, his piece of lumber. And we need to keep him safe by a factor of 2.5 by determining what the spacing between these two rows of nails should be so that when he's on this beam made out of two pieces of wood nailed together, that he's safe. All right, so these are 2 by 10s all right, so for our American friends, I've converted the uh, the units into metrics. Sorry about that, but I'll convert it back at the end and give you some inches if you like that. Okay, so let's get going. We know that the shear flow, which is what we're going to need to solve this problem, is VQ over I. All right, so what we're going to eventually analyze is the shear flow right between these joints because that's the point where this, these nails will fail is right between the two joints right there. So we're going to solve and we're going to find a shear flow so basically how the shear is flowing in between those two pieces of lumber. So we need V, Q and I. So let's start with V. So to find V we're going to need a free body diagram of the situation. Alright, so we have a weight, of course, from the guy. I'm going to neglect the weight of the wood just to make this problem a little simple, simpler. And we're told he's a mass of 100 kilograms. Well, we need a force. So, oh, well, mass times gravity. That will give us a force in newtons. So, if you just sum up forces, and the y to be zero, you can find. The reaction to be 490 newtons. So let's get a shear diagram out of this. Alright, I'm not going to go and make cuts and find the equations. We're just going to think about this. So as we start from here, x equals 0, I could say, and we'll work our way out onto the beam, we're just going to think what are the forces going to be doing us to doing to us as we go. Are they going to be pushing us up or pulling us down? Alright, and the reaction here, the first thing that happens as soon as we step on this beam, boom, that reaction kicks us up to a value of 490 newtons. Alright, now as we go on, nothing else is pulling us up or pushing us down, so we remain at a constant value, although here of 490. Then here we get pushed down by an amount well, what turns out to be 490 times 2, all right, or 980. Now to here, and then of course nothing happens to us until we get here, where we could then get pushed up again to zero by this reaction. And this is negative 490. All right, there we go. So for this, for the sake of this, the shear in this, the magnitude of the shear is constant. So we can write that. So that's the number we're going to use in our equation. Because the spacing of the nails here will be the same as it is here, even though the shear force is negative. That only makes sense. All right, so now for Q and I. So let's take a look at these two boards once again that are stacked up. All right, there we go. So the neutral axis of these, since the boards are identical, the neutral axis is going to run right through the center. And that is very handy for us because we're also analyzing this thing at the center. 
So that makes calculations for Q and I quite easy because we don't need to, you know, take a look at different areas for Q. And we don't need to use the parallel axis theorem at all for I. So again, throwing in some dimensions. All right, so the moment of inertia, as we know for anything about a centroid, is base height cubed by 12. So in our case, the base is this, the height is the full thing here. All right, so we have it in millimeters to the four. I could convert it to meters, but I want my spacing in millimeters. So I'll just roll with it. So Q, all right, so Q is by definition in this equation, the first moment of area either above or below the situation or the cut we're looking at. And we're of course looking at this cut right here. So we can look at either above or below. And let's just choose above, makes it nice and positive. All right, now if we would choose below, we would get negative. That would go negative. But we're looking, we're looking at the magnitude of things, so I just like to choose above. So Q, as we might recall by definition, is the distance to the centroid times the area of that piece. So in our case, the area is this whole red area. The distance to the centroid is th this. Centroid location. All right, so plugging in some values here. All right, so there we have all the ingredients, V, Q, I. That's all we needed for the shear flow. Let's go into calculating the spacing. So this is kind of a slightly separate step, probably the, I say the most challenging, or it's not really too challenging, but the, in this question, the most challenging part to find what the spacing means and what shear flow means and how those two connect together. So I'm gonna draw a section of the beam here and we'll take a look how to find S. All right, so here's a potential cross-section. And I've taken a look at the cross-section and I've pulled the nails to the edge. It doesn't really make a difference. Now, how about for S? Well, the spacing of the nails we want is this distance here. 
All right, but since the nails are going to be equally spaced, we can also say S is halfway the distance between the nails, like so. All right, we just simply shifted it over. All right, now in this between bit here, the piece how we're analyzing, our shear flow, all right, F, that flow of shear is going to be going through there like an actual like flow. All right, we're going this way. Like that. So shear flow is in newtons per meter, the amount of newtons per every meter of shear. So we can say, if we look at this piece, that the shear flow, newtons per meter, and we're going to assume that one nail picks up all the shear flow all right, of this piece here. That this nail picks up all the shear flow from here. So basically it takes you know half on one side, half on the other side between its neighbors. So F times S has to be equal to or less than the force of the nails. Alright. So basically the shear flow is going this way, the nail is going to resist the other way. And we have to make sure that you know the the force of the nails is greater than the shear flow, otherwise it's going to shear off. In this case, the force of the nails overall, we have two rows of nails here. So it's actually going to be two, because you can imagine that the shear flow, it's not just right on the edge here, it actually flows through the whole thing, right, all over the bottom here like this, going this way. So it's basically this whole area here, if you will. All of this shear flow in this area is picked up by these two nails. That's why we need that two there. All right, and that's uh, pretty well it. We can just rearrange and solve for S. F was VQ over IB, or VQ over I, sorry. And we know all that stuff. All right, and then when we work this out, it turns out to be all right. So S has to be less than or equal to 157 millimeters. All right, now careful, we're not quite done yet. We still have this factor of safety. All right, now a factor of safety is pretty common in engineering, and there's lots of ways, or there's only one way of defining it, but lots of ways of explaining the definition. The way I like to use is to say. Yes, allowed, so the amount that we actually want has to be equal to the amount that we calculated divided by the factor of safety. All right, so let's say we calculated it to be 157 in order to make it what we want. So the allowable, the desirable safety, we need to divide it by a certain amount. So dividing by this amount will make this number get smaller, making it safer. And of course you can rearrange this. Usually you give a factor of safety is equal to something over the allowable. So calculated over allowable or like given over max or whatever, something they're gonna say something. But basically what you get over the factor of safety is what you want. All right, so putting this in here. All right, 2.5 was our factor of safety. Yes, allowable. All right, or we can write approximately 3.1 inches. All right, so on a drawing, you would say um, 
two, I don't know, smooth shank nails, uh, 78 millimeters on center, all right, for safety, something like that. And that's a pretty reasonable answer. Three inches, all right, it's about the length of my finger. And it's actually quite a few nails. You probably, if you were construction working, you probably wouldn't put that many nails in. That's just insane because you'd have to go back later and pull them all out again when you needed that lumber back. Anyway, that's kind of a fun little question to do. And I'm sure these calculations most definitely get done when you're designing beams and things like that. Headers, above doors. All right, all these different things we use in construction. And this sort of force per nail can also be some sort of weld where you get the force as like let's say you know, a thousand newtons per centimeter or something and then instead of Fn here you would uh, just rearrange this equation to use that. Alright, thanks for watching and this brings me to the last of my scheduled or planned beam videos. If you want to see another sort of topic on beams or you want me to solve a particular problem for you, alright let me know and I'll see what I can do. Thanks so much. We'll see you around.